I think it's wonderful that we have a unified effort with the world leaders going forward. I'm so thankful that President Biden has put this as one of his top priorities. Um, last year, I used to say when I do a lot of lecturing that it's the first time I like your president more than mine because President Xi has been very serious on climate change. You know, as you pointed out for the last two five-year plans, uh, the climate has been one of the top priorities um, on it. Um, I think the only problem is that China is still generating a lot of electricity by coal. They're planning on building several coal generating facilities in the next five years, but then phase it out for a nuclear power as well as renewable um, um, energy options. So I think it's very laudable, very achievable with China's commitment to it. I believe the United States will achieve their goals with the right leadership. So we're on a very positive path. Well, much has been made about China and the U.S. coming together on climate change. China accepted the U.S. invitation to the summit pretty quickly. How impactful was John Kerry's visit to China recently as climate envoy ahead of this summit? I think it was very important because it signaled the sincerity of the United States position now. Obviously, for the past four years, we have not been a reliable partner on, on climate change issues. Um, so now that with our new president in, in power, with John Kerry in the new position, I think it shows the dedication of the United States to really make things happen. You know, again, Earth Day goes back 51 years. Mm -hmm. Gaylord Nelson um, was actually a friend of mine and started it from the floor of the um, Senate and from, a, from, a, um, uh, from Seattle, Washington. And it just took the grassroots efforts in the United States started the EPA the next year, started the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act. Um, so a lot of things can happen in a short period of time if you've got the proper leadership. Okay. And I think both the U.S. and China have that leadership now. More than 40 leaders at this summit. How are these pledges different than what was outlined and promised in the Paris Climate Agreement? I think that there's been too much rhetoric and not enough action um, on a lot of these these goals. And I'm, I'm hopeful that has changed now, that we'll have more action and less rhetoric. Um, I think also the ability to meet the goals had been better defined before it was very unclear um, how people would achieve what they're saying. Again, China's laid out a very specific pathway to meet their um, um, minimization of coal by in, you know, basically 10 years, um, how to become carbon neutral um, by 2060. The U.S. has um, done many things in the last uh, 25 years, 50 years, to be able to meet the goals. So now they can accelerate that, that promise and get to it. I think also uh, businesses have become better at figuring out how um, to minimize the environmental releases and actually save money in doing that. Um, I was at a company many years ago that we reduced our air emissions and water emissions by 88% and saved money every year in doing those projects because really pollution is waste in a, in a business sense. So if you can make a more efficient manufacturing process, you can actually save money and help the earth.